und das Zulassen. Das Bild Challenge oder das Bild the Gap between the Church and the Music Ministers. And all that. And he said, you can be that as well. 
Now, I started encouraging me to see other things in gospel music. I started going to school, paying attention to school, looking at management. Today, yes, I direct music in KICC Maryland. I, I do other music in uh, 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 businesses and all that, but I still work. And why I'm, not, why I'm saying this is, yes, we want the platform as gospel musician, but that doesn't box you as a musician to box yourself, not to do other things. You have the capacity, as a matter of fact, as a musician, you have more capacity to do more things. Because what you do is spontaneous. As a singer, what you do is spontaneous. And I will give you, I will give you an example. You, you as, a, as, a, as an instrumentalist, for instance, you're playing on a particular key, and your pastor raises a song on another key. Would you say, because I can play C major all my life, that is what you're going to do? No. Even if you are playing D major, your pastor has raised the song on E flat. My, my brother, my sister, you have to play on E flat. If you are the singer, you started a song, you raise me up for instance. And the pastor who is not the music person, who is the convener, so sorry, who is the convener of, of the vision, has changed the song on another key. And I think this is where one of my songs will have a lot of problems. You, you criticize your pastor in other words, pastor don't, they don't know, they don't appreciate music. No, they don't know, they don't have to know how to sing to appreciate music. Some of them just want to sing, they just want to worship God. The only difference is that they don't have the voice. But trust me, they know better than you do, even with your music uh, 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 experience. So you are spontaneous, you have capacity to do so much more. We can suck for so many platforms and never get it. I say that again, we can suck for so, so many platforms and never get it. It has to start from you. And it is not hard to see. It is never hard to see. When people see your heart and they start for people will go in line with that. Now, excellency in music starts with God. Now, why do we even do music in the gospel industry? This is where we all get it all wrong. I feel we get it all wrong, my opinion, by the way. We are doing music to praise God. And we forget that when we praise God, we have to bring the excellence in the beat into it. Now, I'm going somewhere. Most of us are under the guise of anointing and grace and not to do the work. If you want a platform, like my dear sister asked the other time, that a lot of people leave the church and because they want platform because of money and all that. I think I'm one way or the other. If you like, give me the chance, to answer in better I will also. But, 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 but I want to tell you that one of the things that will give you major platforms, major relevance, is understanding what excellence actually means in gospel music. Christianity is not for lazy people. I keep telling people, you just have to do the work. God, when he was creating, creating the earth, he worked for six days. It was there, Genesis, Genesis 1 to like 28, in verse 3, we work and God and God said, and God said, on the seventh day he rested. Now God is all encompassing. He has the power to create everything at a go. The only reason he created order is to show us what excellence. After everything, God created and looked back and said, all that he has created is good. It's good. And everything looked beautiful. That is the work we need to put into it. So a lot of us I don't guys of it doesn't really matter if you are not skillful. Just praise God, whichever way. And it's showing in our productions. It's showing in our, uh, 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 what, how we do our praise and worship in church. We don't spend time on the world. We don't spend time to look at what we are. I'll give you another example. There was a time that Pastor is not a, a, a singer. I think Pastor Matthew is only the one that really plays a lot of emphasis on this. But my pastor wants good music but doesn't understand the rudiment and all that. And he said something one day, he said, if you sing a song for a long time and you are not looking at the people you are singing to, please stop it. A lot of people took offense. And I went back to him and I said, Pastor, why? What if we like the song and the reading is really good? And he said to me that, okay, you like the song. You are leading people in, you are leading people in praise and worship. Then you are leading yourself. If you like the song and the people don't like the song you, you're doing, the whole essence is to bring them closer to God. Then I started studying, how do you bring people closer to God? You must understand what it requires, how you get their attention. It's a whole lot in the world today. People are not smiling. People are going through a lot. So they come to church to find solace. Then you have to do the work to get their hearts glued to the church so they don't look elsewhere. 
When you sing first two songs, especially in this technology age, first two songs that is not ministry to them, they switch their phone and start going on Facebook. Yes, yeah. And you lose, you lose that soul. For the rest of the service, you may, you may not get them back. Yeah. So the work starts with us. Most times as music ministers, we start and we set the tone of the service. So when you come in, your pastor has prepared so many messages. He has done so much through the course of the week to prepare the message. You certain the tone because you just do not care. And I will say, Go share with Jesus. I will help it with uh, and tell you what you will not worry. It goes beyond that. Why are you singing those songs? Are they in sequence? Do you have a reason behind it? Do you, do you want to lose the people? Do you want to get them to dance? When they are dancing, is there any meaning to every song that is being done? This is where we put our work into. You have to. You just need to. Again, Paul was telling uh, Timothy to stop it, to show yourself that if you look at the life of Timothy, for instance, Timothy was born in the church. Timothy was born in the, he was born and bred. So why does he even really need to stop So you just have to put in the work to really, really achieve excellence. I think uh, for now I just have to stop there until I get questions. I'll be able to uh, answer questions according to you. Really, the really same thing. As a minister, you're leading the people, you're not leading yourself. Thank you. All right, we'd like to hear from you as well, sir. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. I hope this is permitted too, because we are in the midst of the children of God. Um, I thank the organizers of this uh, program. So, like you said, this will be the first time I'm meeting him too, and most of the people who are here. And it's a privilege meeting him too. So, it's a great privilege to be here. My own focus, so, and like she has told uh, part of my, my thing that I wanted to talk about today. So, it's still the same spirit. So, my whole focus is on how to raise excellent uh, choir. So, and if you want to raise excellent choir, that means someone, it's a body on someone's shoulder to carry. So, and in many churches, they call them different names. They call them choir master or choir leader or whatever. So, but they are the one in charge of the choir to raise the choir. Like it being, she said, said, well, if you want to be a choir master or choir leader, you can't do more than the knowledge of the pastor in charge. So, as choir master or choir leader or music director, you need to know what the pastor in charge wants you to do, the kind of music he wants in that assembly. In some assembly, maybe they just need classical music and you are leading your choir to do contemporary music. It's a wrong foundation. And like you said, you start losing them. So, when your choir rise up to minister and they are singing what the church doesn't understand, then they will carry their food, like they said, and they will keep themselves busy. Then, well, because it is church, when you finish, they will clap and say, hallelujah. But that thing didn't go anywhere. So, I just took my time uh, because, like I said, it's a really privilege to be here too because I learned some things to be here which I didn't put my day to. So, to be a good leader, to raise an excellent choir, though you might not need to acquire well, maybe uh, BSc in music or whatever, but number one thing I always tell people that you need the Spirit of God to lead you. Once you are full with the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord knows the heart of God himself. And the Spirit of God knows the heart of the um, pastor in charge, and he knows the heart of the people you 
you are going to minister with and you know the heart of people you are going to work with. So, as a leader, you must have the Spirit of God because you are working in the church. If you want to be an accountant, you must know how to count one or two or three, put one together and not miss what you want to do. So, you have to have knowledge of what you are about to do. Then, you can proceed on that. You are planning to raise excellent choir, people that can gather together and produce sound with one voice. And there won't be any competition, there won't be anything contrary to what you want to hear. It's a big work. Number one, they are not professional, they are volunteers. So, and in the, the congregation you are in, it might be a challenge because the people you will meet might not be the type of people who have sung before or who know any music. So it might be a beginning again, starting from the scratch. So that's why you must have the knowledge of what you are about to do so that it will be the, uh, they say it in my own language, the blind showing ways to the blind people. So, they will go into the wrong way, so and the thing will not be balanced. So, number one, the balance, everything has to be balanced. You put a structure together so that you give your you will give yourself uh, unnecessary work to do. Structure in the sense that you have some people to work with you who have the understanding of what you are about to do. When in some churches they have musicians, they employ musicians. So those are another group. But you are working with people that are going to sing. You need their voice. The people, the, the, the people who are in charge of music said, our voice is the most natural source of sound from which music can be made. So with our voice we can do many things. So the number one thing you need to do, you put the house in order. You need to group them. We call them sopranos, alto, tenor. In uh, classical, then we have bass. But if it is contemporary settings, you don't need bass. Maybe occasionally. So then you need to group them. Then the next step is that you need to search for their voice range so that everybody will sing at their own convenience. It's not that when you introduce this part and this part, the person that's supposed to sing at the high register will be struggling. You need to know their voice range. Then you distribute them according to their voice range. So after doing that, then you have done number one. Then all of them know their group and they know how they are going to be working together. Then, how to blend them, you start to realize it. How do you coordinate your own piazza? Like I said, the Spirit of God is in you, and you are working with the Minister of God. Maybe you have been giving, how many times do I? Am I saying it? Okay, let me rush it. So, for you not to have uh, stress and to enjoy the work and you are dealing with people who volunteer to be in that group you will have some people working with you like when they come to the other you have to make it fun so that it won't be stress for, for, for them the tribal people have their leaders the other people have their leaders Tell them have their leaders. If you have this, have their leaders. You prepare those people. And before they come to the other, you make arrangements of what they are coming to do. So that when they get there, they've already known what they are coming for. And mind you, it's voluntary. And you don't you are not coming there to waste their time. So you must be able to manage their time well. If they are going to spend two hours. Make sure that you, those two hours, you spend it and 
It's yielding results. So that we encourage them to come another time, and they will trust you that you are not going to waste their time. So that will keep you to have more members to come in because when they know that you will respect their time, we want to start nine o'clock, and we start nine o'clock. We end it eleven o'clock, and then what you go and do other thing? You have married men, you have married uh, women, and they have other thing to. Not that they are going to sit in the church and be asking all the long. So you have to respect that and manage their time. That's why you have some people who, when, you, when they come, you quickly distribute them, they go and settle themselves with the people you've been with before. At times, some people call them part leaders. So if you work with them, with your part leaders, and you work with them, they know what to do. You quickly distribute them and they meet them and they meet. Give them time. I give you 30 minutes, 30 minutes to gather yourself together. And you know you are working with a group of people and you are going to play them. So when Soprano got in their part, auto and all these things, then you bring them together as their leader. Then you listen to their and uh, what they are about to sing and you correct them. Not that you I don't know how to put it, you it's not a matter of criticizing them that why are you sounding like this or whatever. You know how to talk to people with wisdom. You have the spirit of God to relate with them and talk to them in a way that they will understand that you are correcting them, not uh, disgracing them or messing them up. So by the time you do the realize together and you listen to them, you will see the result you get without stress. Because some people have done the job for you, the people you prepared ahead of the time. And by the time you will see that the jazz will be formed. And the musician too, they have the leader that you've given them their work. So that Riaza day, they will just put it together and the thing will work together. All you need to do is just listen to their tonal quality, ripping everything, then balance their voice and make sure that they are singing together as one because choir sing together. It's not a band or choir sing together. You teach them how to listen to each other so that it won't be a form of competition. And you let them know that, no, it's not that big man. The soprano must be too high and the auto too. Then another thing is that you have to balance it. Balancing it is that you, the duration must be together. Soprano, auto tenor, it's not that you have ten, uh, five sopranos, then you have ten autos, then you have two tenor, and it won't balance. You have to balance it so that the quality of their voice will be together and what they will produce together will have meaning. Then the harmony will blend together. So, because of my time, I have a lot to, but let me stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It is not your mission. Yes, you have been called to sing to minister, but in that particular auditorium or church that you want to minister, you need to know what the vision you have in mind, what has God told them. You cannot come and say, God told you A, while God told him B. That's the beginning of trouble. <laughs> because you are not the owner of the church. Yes, God owns the church. But he has put someone there to head the church, so you need to work with him. That's one of the things that he said. And then you need to have the spirit of God, because this is all about God. If there is no spirit of God, then you're doing secular music. Because what you, the voice you speak has to carry power. The, the words that come out of your mouth, they need to carry power. That's what makes a difference. That way someone can say, I love God, and then everybody falls down. Another person will say, I love God, and we are just looking at him like, so how that there was next? You know, so there has to be the spirit of God. Then you need to know music. It is very important. There is a place of the anointing. There is a place of the understanding. You need to know what you are doing. Because if you don't know, you can't teach. And then you continue to argue with your choir member. Otto tells you, no, I'm on this particular key. And you say, no, it's not supposed to be like that. So um, you also need to understand moderation and balancing. Then, most importantly, okay, don't let me most important. One of the important things, time management. We are now in a world where everybody's attention span is like little, especially in this 
videos. We are all restless. We want to do what we want to do now and get to the place. So you can't keep it quiet for five hours, ten hours, because you want them to perfect the music. There are styles of methods you can use. You can send them the music before they go for rehearsal. You can use the part leaders. You know, people are a little prepared before they come, and then it makes your job easy as well. And then um, the last one here is uh, constructive criticism. There is a way you can um, tell someone you have done well, and it will be appreciated. And there's a way you can tell someone the same thing, and you know it's a lie. Um, in my own language, they, they will say, but they lack all labo. There's a way to say it. So we need to be constructive when we're criticizing. What you think you know how to do, you may know how to do it 100%, but people may not like you doing it. They may prefer that person that does not know how to do it. So you need to work hand in hand. Thank you very much for your time. I'd like to ask again, would you like to say anything really? Um, very, very briefly. Uh, and this is very key, especially for the music leaders, uh, the choir leaders that are here. There are major, major problems, major technical problems you really need to look out for. Major technical problems. You must try to, I know it's because it doesn't have a lot of time, but they are key. When you're doing contemporary music, it's totally different from doing classic harmonies. Harmonies, yeah. people are usually seeing people throw microphones on themselves during prayers out. Oh, you are singing my part, that's my part, that's not your part. That. And you seem not to have a literal solution to it until you start hearing what they can do. Like he said something very profound. He said, one of the things, one of the mistakes they made while growing up, because most of us started from all those churches, if you agree with me. Most of the music um, we, we do there, they are already written. Classical music, they are written. The key you have to sing it on is there. The, the, the person who wrote it is there. The lyrics are there. So it is set in a way. They expect that soprano will do melody line. So other people follow. But in contemporary music, things changed. And some of us still, still carry that mindset of classical music to contemporary music. So they expect that soprano singer should do melody. So in some cases, it can, it can be really tricky. So what he said that I want us to take away from here is that understand everybody, every, everyone's and vocal range. It does not really matter if this person is doing melody, this person is doing tenor, like this person is doing um, tenor, especially. Who Range sings the melody better. Is it tenor? Is it alto? Is it soprano? Whichever range does it better, let them do the melody. Then you split the other part in contemporary music. And in contemporary music, it is just three parts alone, except we want to diversify a bit. But in classical music, you have a lot of harmony um, um, ranges, like you have the, uh, soprano, mezzo, soprano, uh, uh, alto, um, and, and all that. I think there are like six or seven. Then you start having signifying this and this. But in our local churches, first thing he said that I think you need to hold on to is understand everybody's voices. Group them where they fit in. When song starts, understand the key that best express the melody line. Give it to any of the part that best sings it better and let the rest do it. It will save a lot of time and uh, make things easier. I think you would like to say something as well. Okay, so we'll round it off. The Bible says you will know the truth and it is set you free. If you want to be a good leader, that you won't have much problem introduce them into music. Let them know the rudiments. A choir that go through rudiments, either secular, either, either the contemporary or classical, that is the foundation. There is no any other way. If they know the, 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 the back and the front of their palm in the music and they know the language of the music, all you just need to do, you don't give them their scores. Even before, even if you don't give them their parts, once they know the melody and they understand music, they will pick their part. So it will make the job much, much easier. But if you can't teach them, talk to the, uh, the, the pastor in, in charge to get you a music teacher that will become maybe once in a while or quarterly 
that will teach them the basic thing in music, how they can read music to make the job much and they can grow from there. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm bringing it home now because we've been talking about, you know, we've just been saying ministers, but we need to remember that what we're talking about is your local church, yeah. where you're serving. Because sometimes as a minister, you go to another church and once they start their music, they're like, oh no, it's not, that's not how it is done. How can that be handled? I mentioned earlier that I was at a church, you know, I went for their Christmas carol on the island. And when I got there, I realized that their mode of praise and worship was for all of them to sit down. To me, it was strange. I've never seen that kind of thing. Well, I have to accept it. Because that's their style. So I asked, are we speaking of the telephone? And they said, no. Ah, okay. So we sat down. We did praise and worship. I said, can I dance? I can't dance while sitting down. I said, but this is how we do it in our church. I would not say they are not born in Who am I to say that? But that's their style. Now, the second one is competence. Sometimes we have people in our choir that they are told totally deaf. You give them the C, the same F. How can people like that be managed? You know, for people who would like to learn here. You know, in talking about constructive criticism as well. You know, some really have the zeal. They are so confident, but they are not competent. How do you handle people like that in the choir? And then the last one is um, everybody here spoke about 